Continuing coverage, Colorado Springs, of course, saw its deadliest mass shooting last month. And as the investigation continues into that mass shooting, one of the biggest questions remains about how did the shooter get a hold of the gun that he did not purchase himself? This morning, we're taking a deep dive on a national database, helping law enforcement get these answers and solve crimes. Our Colette Bordelon takes us behind the scenes to show us how investigators find the person behind the gun. October 24th, 2017. Pablo 911, this is Stephanie. How can I help you? A mom calling about her son. Somebody shot him. Derek Regalado, found dead by his own parents. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. He goes to work every day. He's a postman and he's never been in trouble. Very little to go on at that time. But what was at the scene? Four shell casings from a nine millimeter pistol. Our patrol officers get sent to shots fired. One of their first things that they're looking for is victims, damage to homes, vehicles, and with a major emphasis in the recovery of shell casings. Detective Greg Egan has spent the majority of his life around guns. I don't think you'd fear the gun or the bullet. It's the person behind that gun. Zooming into Pueblo, you can see the parts of town that experienced the most drive-by shootings and shots fired. Already this year, there have been over 300 total gun cases at the Pueblo Police Department, over 250 firearms and evidence this year, and more than 100 guns reported stolen. That number is too high for me. We see on the average of 22 reports a month of somebody reporting their gun as being stolen. When a gun comes off the streets Ready? and into the police department, <laughs> Detective Egan test fires it. You don't have to have an injury. You don't have to have a property damage. That's a shooter, and that shooter needs to come off the street. Those casings are in the very beginning phases of being entered into the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network called NIBIN. I don't even recall how our investigations were prior to this program. The test fired shell casings are plugged into the database, along with recovered casings from crime scenes. We get that shell casing result back, and it'll tell us that that gun was used in another scene, which might give us something to go on that we never would have had before. But first, the casings head to the Colorado Bureau of Investigations in Pueblo. When it comes into the lab, it's assigned a CBI case number. Where Janelle Lyons takes over. Give those leads to, to link the scenes. A special machine takes advanced pictures, which then head to the NIBIN database, where Lyons examines them closely. It'll return somewhere around 50 to 100 images that it says we should take a look at. She sees things many people may miss. As we move back and forth, the lines really stay in good agreement. In a city, we're already in 2021. The total number of shots fired with casings has nearly doubled when compared to the same time period in 2020. NIBIN has generated around 20 leads each year. And hopefully, you know, get that off the street before something else happens. And thinking back to the four shell casings found at the murder scene in 2017, which originally didn't have any leads through NIBIN. Each firearm is kind of set up to where it's like a thumbprint, a fingerprint. There are no two guns alike. That fingerprint sealed the fate of the shooter more than a year later when they were arrested in Colorado Springs and found with the same firearm. You went from almost nothing to the right piece fell in place, to the next piece that fell in place, to getting a 47 year sentence. That speaks volumes. A case closed. Had Niven not been there, would we have gotten there? Maybe. And a network tying it all together. Always watching out for you Pueblo. Colette Bordel on News 5. And those with the Pueblo Police Department also wanted to stress the importance of taking care of legally owned guns. With so many being stolen, you should always know where your firearm is. If it is left behind in a car, for example, there is a chance it could end up in the wrong hands.